the growth dialogue uh, series by vivrity capital and i think uh, vivrity had engaged with uh, medi bali sometime in q2 last year and since that time we have uh, started our lending relationship and you know it's been it's been uh, it's been uh, quite a journey since then so uh, just uh, in terms of initiating that dis- uh, uh, our discussion uh, uh i'll just request you a, f- a few few lines from your side in terms of the overall uh, journey of uh, uh, medi bali since it started in 2013 the several uh, changes uh, it has gone through from retail to institutional and you know the entire segment uh, some uh, a bit about yourself as well and uh, you know how how uh, medi bali is progressing in, in terms of its growth in, in the entire health tech uh, ecosystem sure amit thank you. thanks for the introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me for this Uh, so I'll start out with a uh, small introduction about myself. Then we will uh, introduce many buddy and talk about the journey uh, a little more detail. So I am Siva Venkatraman. I head finance for uh, many buddy. I've been with many buddy for almost three years now. It does feel like much longer than that, but in <laughs> real calendar terms, it is uh, three years. Uh, so I, I have about eighteen years of uh, experience. Uh, worked mostly for startups. Uh, I started my career as a financial derivatives trader. I used to trade in uh, options and futures on gold, silver, crude oil, and such. Long back. Uh, suppose that I went on to start my own trading firm, financial derivatives trading firm. I ran that for about four years. Uh, then witnessed the 2008-9 crisis. Um, that's that's one opportunity I wish I hadn't had, but got the front row seat. to that uh, financial crisis and uh, which resulted in me wrapping up my business then uh, came back to india this was in middle east so i came back to india and then uh, uh, started working for a bunch of startups so since then i've spent some time with uh, flipkart uh, rento mojo which is into uh, consumer durables and furniture uh, leasing and now with medibody in between i of course also was part of a, a large family office of about 600 million investors of western uk did that for about 4 years so that's that's been my journey it's uh, the first half is about uh, investing and the second half is uh, on the other side of the table where uh, managing finance as well as building finance teams for uh, fast growing startups that has been yeah. my experience in terms of generally uh, the transition from you know 2008 uh, i find very few people who are aware what has happened in 2008 apart from reading from the books so i have the same vintage uh but just in terms of your journey from you know trading to working with several startups uh to now you know finally being at medi medibody for the last 3 uh, years uh just your perspective on uh, first uh, the entire journey of medibody uh, i mean uh, last 3 years we'll talk about how uh it has been growing from institutional to retail and uh, you know even on the institutional side you have a very strong client base uh but i just thought i'll ask you for a small snippet on the many buddies journey uh, since 2013 or let's say 17 and your experience of having been worked in several startups versus working at many buddy how is it different better worse you know not comparable to the previous companies <laughs> uh so I, i just thought i'll pick your brains on on this point sure i mean uh, to answer that question first uh, i think one of the important uh, uh, points that make medibody stand out is the fact that we are doing something which is of uh, very serious significance to the society as well as to the healthcare ecosystem in india right uh, it's very different from when you see it from a traders perspective where you just kind of uh, it's a zero sum game where one one person loses the other person uh, gains there is no other money to be created in the process no value to be created to only value can be transferred right now here working for a startup is of course more exciting uh, there is very very serious potential to create value not not just on uh, you know on only n- not just on the annual basis or if you work for 5 years but on a daily basis the decisions we make have profound impact on the course of the journey of a startup but in the case of metibody it's even more impactful because what we do also impacts the lives of uh, so many thousands of people on a daily basis albeit in a small way but we are touching upon the most critical aspect of everyone's life which is health right health and wellness which kind of uh, 
makes me believe that the work that I'm doing here is much more impactful, much more meaningful than what I've done all this while. Not to say that I didn't enjoy the rest of it, but this is uh, it's an added element. And as I mature through my career, I'm also looking for multiple bottom lines, right? As companies do, as individuals also, we tend to look for multiple bottom lines, and this is one such opportunity which kind of I'm, I'm grateful to have gotten and uh, uh, continuing to be here. Of course. Uh, I think when we spoke first, the the first statement uh, that I started with is I know Medibuddy because my wife uses it and she's cheap marketing. Uh, that's that was my first uh, intuition. Now, uh, health health tech is a very broad segment, correct? Uh, uh, people generally talk about health tech and it's the buzzword and there's a lot of capital that has been coming in. But even within health tech, there are very uh, non-overlapping segments, right? uh now big names like tata lions uh, you know they they've been trying to enter into uh the health tech space so in uh in in that perspective how is medibuddy similar or different to some of the larger players that spin out that uh, uh, uh larger players that are out there and how is medibuddy building its moat in terms of differentiating uh, itself and in terms of you know upping the game in, in the health health tech industry sure so uh medibuddy is an integrated e-health platform uh what i mean by that is uh medibuddy has all the services online that you would typically expect to consume as a healthcare customer in the offline world right we are not a vertical player we are rather an horizontal player what i mean by that is uh, so we do have consults labs medicines which is what typically constitutes what we call the opd uh, services that we provide to the customers online as much as possible of course diagnostics requires a, a last mile physical touch point which we do have uh, so, and all, also medicine delivery requires a physical touch point. But uh, the idea is to make sure that we provide all of these services as much as possible digitally and in a technology enabled way so that we manage to, uh, over time, we can bring down the cost of healthcare delivery in India, which is a very, very important fa- factor, long term factor for us to work towards. Right. So that's, that's the introduction about Medibuddy. And how are we different from the other players? I think most of the players that you mentioned, uh, the large players such as Tata Reliance, who all have bought businesses which were already startups, are all uh, going after, at least in the in the, the large part of their businesses, are all towards e-pharmacies, right? Uh, e-pharmacy is, as, as I mean, it's easy to understand that it's, it's actually the part, one segment of e-healthcare in India or tele-health health tech in India, which has received the most amount of funding because it is right copying a lot of or it's deriving a lot of playbook which has been already built by in the e-commerce sector <clears throat> right so it is easier to start from that end and hence rightfully so there's so much of capital which has flown in there including the ones of tata and reliance and all that <clears throat> but over time what these companies are doing is they're also trying to get into uh, other services such as uh, labs diagnostics as well as say teleconsultation and all of it medibuddy is different in this aspect that we have doctor at the center of our service uh, stack what that means right. is if you think about it even in the offline world uh, our affinity is always towards a particular doctor right if a doctor right this address from a particular point to another point A to point B, we wouldn't mind going driving the extra distance and reaching the same doctor at a particular uh, point, right? But if it is medicines, we are typically most of the customers are gravitating towards the point where they have the maximum discount. Diagnostics, a little more affinity, but definitely not as much as what a doctor has. So every business requires trust and healthcare requires the maximum level of trust. And the trust is built through an affinity to a doctor in the case of healthcare. And that's where we started. So originally, Medibody started as a doctor consultation platform and added various services as we matured through the uh, time. Now, we are very different from these players because we didn't start at the pharmacy and we rather have doctor at the center of it and we continue to do so. So to that extent for us, pharmacy is a very small part of what we do. The, the larger part within what we do is actually the teleconsultation and the diagnostics. So these we believe are critical. That's one way we are very different. And also the fact that uh, we are a horizontal platform allows us to work with all the players that you mentioned. To be very frank, uh, uh, we work with the Tata One MG and Alliance Networks and Apollo and uh, Pharmacy and all the players because we are able to stitch all their services together and provide a unified uh, service delivery platform for the customer to take advantage. Of. So that's the purpose of existence for Medium. If I were to just rephrase it, the way I see it is uh, 
uh, you've been after the core magnet which is the doctor everything else is peripheral and uh, for you the uh, for you the deliverable is service for which you can potentially charge higher rather than uh, uh, a retail game which is more of a volume game correct uh, right. now two things first is uh, you know tech anything that's related to tech uh, uh, has seen a serious boost especially after covid-19 right yeah uh, even in terms of doctor consultation i i my dad is a doctor and you know i have always favored going to a doctor but in covid-19 after during the pandemic most people were uh, restricted to doing these consultations online second is uh, because of covid uh, a lot of new opportunities have come up which uh, you know people uh, uh, did not imagine or never explored earlier right so in in terms of the overall uh, positive or negative impact that the pandemic had on uh, many body as a company and health tech startup health, health tech ecosystem as a whole if you could just elaborate on that and uh, you know how it's been changing the entire uh, ecosystem yeah so covid kind of changed a lot of behavior on the customer side right now more importantly what covid did was at a at a high level it laid bare open the fact that we are a seriously health infra constrained society right that we saw in the tv and we heard news of people suffering and going through eventual uh, pain uh, because india hasn't built the kind of infra that it needs to service the kind of citizen i mean the kind of population that we have in india right so uh, technology is no more what was seen as a convenience factor right till that point was suddenly overnight realized that it was actually an essential part of where india should move towards if we were to ever believe that we can take care of the entire population that we got right so that right. at a macro level it changed policies for example the telemedicine guidelines had been in discussion for a long time till that point and the moment covid lockdown started or covid just hit us uh, the prime minister of india allowed the telemedicine guidelines to be ratified and implemented right so overnight so yeah. this was changed because at policy level people realize it's critical for us to embrace technology that's that's a big change from a customer perspective of course customers realize that uh the online consultation is while it was typically consumed and even during covid it's usually part of the what we call the uh, cold cough and fever which is the easy part of the consultation but people realize the value of it <clears throat> and yeah. once they realize the value of it we realize that people started taking more and more specialized consultation so it changed the behavior of people in some segments it changed for good right even today a lot of people like to start the first consultation online and if needed then go and see a doctor which was uh, which would have been extremely difficult for us to accomplish if we were to do it as a, a company in the absence of covid so covid kind of changed the customer behavior that is second third covid also brought a lot of focus on preventive wellness right now that the covid is long gone right. people yeah. realize that it is important to be healthy and more and more people realize it's important to maintain a healthy lifestyle and stay healthy and also at go to the doctor or do an online consultation well in time so that it doesn't you know become something more serious than what it should have been right so those kind of changes in terms of more health focused more tech focused and uh, taking advantage of what the, the kind of tech infra that we have the, all those things came about in a very very short period of time of course the consultation spiked during that time and it has since then come down a little I and mean, quite a bit but the behavior change that we see in terms of focus on preventive wellness and all of it continues to stay as well as the policy changes are still more favorable towards an online adoption right and uh, one more additional change that we realized is the so we work with a lot of corporates right? we are india's largest corporate wellness uh, service provider on the health side now there we realized that a lot of corporates came forward and provided a lot more wellness benefits than they would have they were providing till that point because people started asking for it and corporates which used to be a typical mnc uh, phenomenon like you mentioned your wife works for jp morgan obviously they understand wellness as a service they have been providing for several years now but even the indian corporates as well as even the small companies including some startups a lot of startups started providing these as uh, benefits to their employees because they realize employee wellness 
as a whole is a very important mandate for hr not just uh, employee happiness and satisfaction inside the organization but uh, overall wellness be- became a mandate for a lot of hr so these are all important sea changes that happened in a very very short period of time which would have otherwise taken <laughs> several decades for us to accomplish to that extent i think covid did help uh, in a massive way so behavioral uh, definitely uh, both retail and in terms of the corporate sponsorship that comes i think one large part uh, which you started with is uh, the policy or the government support uh, uh, for for such kind of infrastructure to exist now uh, i uh, just also thought I'll, i'll touch upon another topic which uh, is is what many parties trying to do as well so you know whenever a business starts this the intended impact and then there are positive surprises that come come along right uh and even uh for someone like me buddy you started with large corporate plan base uh, corporate uh, uh corporate coverage and now you're trying to diversify into retail so in in that context uh the entire me buddy specifically and the entire ecosystem uh, as such uh, bringing in technology bringing in innovation and bringing in capital uh apart from you know corporates offering it to their employees a part of it a large part of it hopefully also percolates to the wider society right uh preventive medication preventive uh, therapies as you mentioned uh and also booklets to tier 2 tier 3 right which which uh, which don't typically spend on healthcare so much so you know if i could just get your views or uh, uh, your understanding of how how the system has been changing typically even the healthcare cost that Uh, a, a, a country like india spends per capita versus what's it, what's it in uh, europe or us that has been going up as well so uh, how do you see the space evolving how how do you see the behavior changing how do you see the impact changing uh, to to people uh, to whom it was not earlier available sure so uh, see medibody provides healthcare services through uh corporates insurance as well as uh, retail right now for us these are all ways for us to acquire the customers and provide services in fact we just call them as payers uh at the end of the day our mission is to take uh, make healthcare accessible uh to a billion indians which means uh, if there if, if whoever is paying for it it's only the one part of what we do right uh, even the healthcare system if you take a look at the overall uh, healthcare ecosystem we split that into healthcare delivery and healthcare financing right so this payer ecosystem is part of the financing uh, line of it now over time what has happened is uh, some of the important things that have moved uh in the healthcare uh, ecosystem are that one of course technology has played a very very critical role in ensuring that the cost of healthcare doesn't escalate uh it still is increasing but in the absence of technology it could have been even worse right so it has kind of controlled the escalation uh, percentages for the cost and uh, now we see that there is more uh, efficiency being realized in various aspects of healthcare delivery such as say diagnostics increasing their utilization hospitals have typically operated at about 50 55% of occupancy now we see that hospitals are keen to build up their uh, occupancy rate so just so that uh, the efficiency kind of trickles down right so all of those have been uh, factors which kind of also changed along with the covid but more importantly the payer ecosystem has evolved quite well in india as compared to what it used to be say 15 years or so what i mean by that is the private spend in healthcare used to be about more than 70% 75% now it's slowly coming down it's now slightly below 70% uh it, this is happening on account of of course uh, indian government pushing aishman bharat to a significant extent now recently they also said that they're going to open it up for the next uh, uh, 40 million odd uh, user base as well which is going to significantly change the way healthcare cost is uh, going to move in future but from a private perspective government is the only payer that we yet uh, don't right. work with we work with corporate insurance and retail payers now even on that front what we realize is people are willing to uh, take on subscription packages so that their overall cost of healthcare for the year comes down even though the upfront cost may be a little more uh, same way the insurance penetration is increasing which is also helping uh, bringing down the healthcare cost in a significant manner right because uh, if you see recently IRDA has received a lot of uh uh submissions for opd um, plans i mean uh, the what used to be only for ipd the healthcare plans and now being opened yeah. up for pd which could also go a significant way in ensuring that uh, there is a uh, focus on uh, cost efficiency and uh, that's how the payer ecosystem has evolved as well as healthcare service delivery ecosystem has evolved in western countries so this is going to go a long way so we believe that 
uh, that's one of the reasons why medibody also has a strategy of working with all the payers because we feel uh, for a country like india where all the payer ecosystem is still evolving it's critical for us to ensure that we are tied up with all the payers and we are able to seamlessly work with all the payers so that the cost of delivery can come down in future that's a, that's one of the important ways we differentiate ourselves as well but these have been some of the important uh, areas and more importantly uh, the online consultation that we do right it also works yeah. as sort of a triaging uh in the absence of this people are going to turn up at a specialist uh without knowing what they are uh, going to pay for and unnecessarily it's going to increase the cost of uh, service delivery which yeah. is going to happen through private means but tomorrow if insurance were to come in now there could be a change of how this is getting administered so a lot of this can be handled online through on, through technology and can be done in a more cost efficient manner if uh, data were to be easily available from that perspective the the initiative of uh, the government to create haba right uh, the aishman bharat health uh, identity is a very very important uh, effort in that direction though there is a lot of work to be done there uh, medibody is one of the uh, apps which are already integrated with haba uh, but the objective of the government with which the government has started this is to ensure that all the health records get stored in one place so that right. whenever uh, somebody were to go for a treatment or any kind of consultation subsequently the doctor or the specialist has access to all the data at, at one point immediately so that the cost of wastage and the money and the time that is lost in diagnosis can be reduced right that's a very very important movement in the right direction so these are all i think some of the important things that have changed in the last 15 years or so which is kind of uh, expected to deliver good results over the next say two decades sure in terms of the overall journey right uh, i'm sure uh, as lenders we look at it uh, we look at the company when it's uh, successful and has raised capital and has uh, business streams and payers and a, 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 an entire model in place but in terms of the overall journey from where you started uh, you know any challenges that were difficult to overcome and you know uh, ecosystem help and government help but some of the uh, difficulties that you faced in you know starting from scratch to getting at wherever you are uh at currently yeah i think uh, we faced uh, some of the problems that a typical platform would face right because you need customers for you to have the service providers and without service providers there is no customer so you starting out from <laughs> scratch typically you have the challenges Uh, and and it also helps once you start getting like uh, this is the two sided network effect right once you have one side sorted then the other side is kind of taken care of and it creates a positive uh, uh, flywheel effect but uh, since we started out as a consulting platform uh the yeah. challenge is also to get the doctors on board it which used to be a problem in those days because i remember uh, satish khan the ceo of the company telling me that uh, he used to uh, wait in the uh, you know that the waiting hall of the doctors just requesting them to come online and just try it out and do a consultation it used to be a difficult uh, task to even people get people to try uh that changed so much during covid when all the doctors were calling us and asking how do we use your platform to provide services right so that's kind of uh, i think we come a long way since then but this was a typical problem and doctors not a <clears throat> community which is used to uh, changing practices right so they typically uh, have a shortage of time and typically go with what has worked for them before uh, now that kind of has changed and it used to be a challenge before similarly we faced a uh, lot of challenges in convincing large corporates that uh, corporate wellness employee wellness is an important uh, aspect and they need to look at it more holistically rather than think of it as you know pharmacy uh, reimbursement that's how it used to be looked at those days but since then i think everybody has been in this period of changing this and kind of played a small role in uh, making sure that this corporate uh, sponsored amounts get spent for the right reasons and largely towards preventive uh, healthcare and preventive wellness rather than just reimbursing employee uh, pharmacy bills so those are all some of the large changes which you kind of fought and <laughs> some some part of the battle has been won uh, so far i would say but i think uh, there still we continue to face some challenges in terms of uh, you know bringing on new cohorts of customers adding new services recently we added surgery as a service and now we kind of already scaled up uh, significantly but uh, it's important for us to go where the customer wants us to go and keep adding new services which of course every time you add a new service there are challenges that come with it but i think we kind of learned uh, how to overcome them and uh, give it the right kind of priority as well in the decision making 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I recall uh, we had briefly, I had briefly uh, mentioned earlier, one of my friends, uh, he was the co-founder at Curofy and he mentioned that uh, onboarding doctors was a biggest challenge. More than the quality or fee or anything, it was, you know, just, just the mental block of doctors right. uh, coming on a platform. And my dad being a doctor, I, I know what he was uh, referring to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on on that context, you know, I think from 2014 to 2023, it has changed a lot. Uh, so you know, what has happened? What is happening now? Uh, just in terms of a forward-looking statement, uh, I think uh, uh, there was there was a study uh, by Redsia which said that uh, you know the health tech industry will substantially grow to 10 to 12 uh, billion in the next uh, two to three years. In terms of the trends, you know, the the ones that you mentioned now, people are doing preventive uh, checkups and uh, corporates are sponsoring and, you know, there's, there's a lot of penetration and the government is sponsoring and helping out in, in whichever way they can. In terms of the trends that may emerge over the next three to five years, opportunities uh, that may come for anybody or any other, uh, you know, budding entrepreneur out there, what are the trends that you see in the next three to five years evolving and opportunities coming up? Sure. So, uh, see, so far the health tech, as I mentioned, has been uh, dominated by e-pharmacy, right? Because that's where the capital has gone in. And uh, it was also the easier place to start if you were to build a new industry. That's an easier place to start. So even today, if you take, let's say it's about four and a half, five billion uh, health tech uh, industry as such of that lion's share, which could be close to about 3.7, 3.8 billion could be e-pharmacy, right? The rest of it is... Yeah. Uh, everything else is the rest of it, which includes AE diagnostics, uh, teleconsultation, wearables, uh, all kinds of devices. Everything is there in the remaining small part of it. But what I think is over time, as the industry matures and grows uh, 9 to 12 billion, there are some estimates which puts it, put this at about 15 billion and so on and so forth. Now, what will happen is that the rest of the segments are also going to start growing very aggressively, right? Because we are already right. starting to see that on the e diagnostic side where there is a lot of disintegration happening and uh, people are now uh, starting to use uh, at-home services and flebo phlebotomist services as a uh, mainstream. Like for us, that has become a la very large percentage of what we do on the lab side. So this uh, this trend is expected to continue, which means okay. it's a lot more uh, of uh, at-home services which will be uh, coming into existence for which there is obviously there is a requirement for tech and the tech already exists that's a great thing about it uh, many buddy as well as several different companies have already built the tech necessary for it and uh, those segments are going to grow very big we've also recently seen a lot of small uh, diagnostic startups coming up uh, primarily focused on e-diagnostic so all this is towards that the second thing is, of course, the wearables market itself. So far, the wearables market has been like kind of the neglected part of it. And uh, uh, the health gadget space has been dominated by uh, with very few players so far. But that could become big uh, when along with e-diagnostics and uh, consultation, teleconsultation growth, uh, that could also become bigger because then the question is of what kind of data is available for the doctor to make the right decisions on, right? So those are going to become for which the wearables market will also have to mature up a little. So uh, I think uh, one of the aspects of this 9, 12, 9 to 10 billion dollar uh, market growth is going to be a little more rounded or balanced growth than what we have seen uh, it uh, happen from so the 1 billion to the 5 billion journey. It's going to be slightly different. Uh, so that's that's a very important aspect which we are also hoping uh, to take advantage of. Yeah, so I mean several factors rather than just one, uh, one single directional focus of uh, you know the, the, the capital contributors. Uh, uh, so, uh, just, just in, in terms of uh, the last point from my side now, uh, anybody has raised a lot of capital, right? And uh, you've been, I won't say experimenting, but uh, adding on business segments, trying out different uh, strategies. Uh, one of the strategies for which uh, I think uh, 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 anybody approached Vibhuti was from corporate to retail. Uh, so in this entire journey, I, I just request uh, a small snippet from you or, you know, your uh, uh, feedback on the association of at what point did Vibhuti come in, how did the capital help you in terms of executing a different strategy and the overall experience uh, in, in terms of uh, the relationship with Vibhuti Capital over the, over, the, over the last six to eight months. Sure. So, uh, 
I mean, uh, we've been we've already raised uh, some debt in the past as well. Though most of the com- money comes in as equity. Uh, I mean, as a startup, we raise equity on a periodic basis. But uh, we have raised debt, but primarily from venture debt providers, right? Now right. Uh, we understand venture debt is more expensive, and uh, the the reason why startups such as us uh, typically work with venture debt is because it's uh, though it's expensive, it it co- I mean it, it comes with uh, more flexibility as well as uh, it's easy to access and the speed of uh, accessing that is. Uh, Uh, quite quite high right now uh, what uh, when when we started <clears throat> thinking about uh, debt for say uh, the future uh, growth as well as uh, uh, acquisition and such what we realized was that uh, we may have to move to uh, move <clears throat> some part of our focus from venture debt towards uh, little more nbfc side of it where so that the cost can also be balanced right so that's where i i liked working with vibruti i think that's where vibruti became a lender to us because uh, the speed as well as the ease of access that vibruti provided us was uh, better than any of the other uh, lenders that i have worked with uh, from medibody side so i think that kind of was a very great i mean it's it's an important advantage that vibruti has today uh, i mean purely from a customer perspective i would say that you should retain that and uh, keep that as a great strength for yourself uh while you haven't quali- uh, while the credit quality you expected to be uh, continue to be expected to remain high but i think the speed and ease of access is a very very important factor where we have kind of uh, liked vibruti and would continue to work with vibruti on sure i mean that's pretty much uh, what what uh, i i wanted to discuss for this session and you know thank you so much uh, for giving us uh, time and opportunity to have have this session